To make the peyote stitch end caps, you're going to need KO or 1G beading thread. Those two threads are the same. We use them interchangeably, but they do come in different colors. You'll have one of those in the kit. And if you're working from your own stash, just get one of these uh, beading threads in a color that closely matches your delicas. You can use your big eye needle to do the stitching, or you can use a traditional beading needle like a tulip needle. I'm gonna do my demo here with the big eye needle. I've cut about a yard and a half, so like a, a hand to hand wingspan here. If you're working with the kit, you have one four yard piece wrapped on a little cardboard bobbin. So you can just measure out a yard and a half up to two yards. And um, either way, if you're cutting this from a spool or from the little cardboard bobbin that comes in the kit, you want to pull your thread and relax it because it's gonna be um, pretty curly when it comes out of its packaging. The trick to starting peyote stitch is keeping tension on your thread while you're setting up. To do that, I like to wrap the tail of the thread tightly around my finger. I have maybe six to eight inches loose and then I have several wraps around my finger and my needles at the other end. Refer to your project instructions for exactly how many beads you should pick up for your peyote stitch end cap cover. I'm gonna be using eight for the demo. I'm also using multiple colors to help you better see the structure of peyote stitch, but most of our end cap covers will be a solid color, a bead soup without a pattern, or sometimes we use two colors where there's a stripe along the edge. But the way I'm gonna do this with three colors, it helps you see how the beads stack on top of each other. So I've picked up as many beads as I need and I need to bring them down towards the tail. So I'm going to pinch them between my thumb and forefinger and pull my needle through. So now they're down here. And now I'm actually going to brace the thread against my middle finger I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold the needle in my right hand and the beads in my left hand. My thread is coming out this yellow bead and the new bead that I'm picking up is going to sit on top of the yellow bead. So that's the last bead in the row and I need to sew up through the next bead because we're gonna be skipping over this last bead. If I weren't doing this on camera, I would actually have everything pinched between my fingers and you wouldn't be able to see it at all. So I'm gonna try to just pull the thread tightly here so you can still see what's happening. All right, so I've sewn through that second bead. I'm gonna push my new bead where it's going to sit on top of the last bead in the row and then I'm gonna pinch everything and pull the needle through. This is probably my best tip for peyote stitch. Don't let your beads just flop around wildly. Put them where they belong, hold them in place, and then pull the thread through. So I'm pulling this so there's tension on the line, and you can see this is made a little three bead pyramid. The yellow and the red beads were picked up initially the blue bead is the new one. So now my thread is coming out this red bead. My new bead is gonna sit on top of the yellow bead. So I'm gonna skip over that yellow bead and I'm going to sew into the next bead. So we're always skipping over a bead here while we're setting up. And again, if I weren't trying to show you, I would pinch it completely between my fingers. So I have my needle through the bead and my new bead, I'm gonna slide it down where it belongs, pinch it, pull the thread through. And you can see how they start to stack up. Again, my thread is coming out of this red bead. So I'm going to skip over the next bead, which is yellow and sew into the next red bead. My new bead is going to sit on top of this yellow bead. So let me sew into the red bead, put the new bead where it belongs, pinch it, pull the thread through. And 
one more time. Pick up a bead. My thread is coming out of this red bead. We're gonna skip over the yellow and sew into this last red bead. So I get my needle in, slide my bead down where it's going, pinch it, pull the thread through. Keep tension on the line, but you can see how this has formed a little like up, down, almost zipper-like pattern. I'm gonna flip it over. I always flip my peyote stitch at the end of every row. That's just easier for me. I'm still trying to keep this nice and tight. After I get this next row on, I can let go of the tension over here on my left index finger. So you see there's like an up down pattern with the beads. My thread is coming out of this red bead. The new bead is gonna sit on top of the red bead and then I sew into the up bead. Sew into that up bead, put the bead where it's gonna sit, pinch it, and pull your thread through. Please be aware that the big eye needles are pointy at both ends. So if you're going to push the needle with your finger like I just did, do so gently, because it is pointy. All right, there's my new bead. See, there's a little pocket waiting for a bead. So I pick up a bead, sew into the up bead, position the bead where it's gonna go, pinch everything, pull the thread through. Continuing to maintain tension on my thread. Pick up a new bead to maintain tension on my thread. Sew into the up bead. Put the new Last bead where it belongs. In this row. Pinch it in place. Pull the thread through. Make sure okay. I maintain now the I can tension. let go with my pick up the new bead here. Sew through release the that bead. Put that new bead where it belongs. This isn't going to go place. anywhere. Now you can see clearly we have this little up down pattern and we just keep filling new beads in the down position and then you sew through the up bead. New bead goes here, sew through the up bead. And I just flip my piece back and forth. If possible, avoid having extra doodads on your beading tray while you're doing this because you're just gonna end up catching your thread on it. Like I have this paper, I have a fuzzy mat, I have a bead scoop, and as I pull my thread through, I keep catching it on things. Like that. And you can confirm your row count by turning it up on the edge where the holes are facing up and counting all of the beads along one edge. You should have the same number on both sides. So I've already counted, I have 16 here, and when I flip it over, I have 16 here. If I had, say, 16 on this side and only 15 over here, that just means I need to do another row, and then that's gonna match up for me. See how the ends of the end of one side fits nicely into the other side. So basically our down beads meet up with the up beads. So I'm gonna fold this And as I pull my thread through, I keep catching it on things. 
Refer to your project instructions for the exact number of rows you need for So now I'm coming out the yellow bead on the left. I'm gonna sew through that up turquoise bead on the right. So we'll be sewing through the up beads on both sides. I'm coming out the turquoise on the right and I go through the yellow on the left. So all the up beads all the way across. I used a different color for my last Please row so tightly. that you can better see how this zipping action takes place and you'll be able to see where this is on the finish cover. Like it's a sandwich. So the two ones are next to each other, but I'm not gonna try to sew it together like this in a tube. That's really fiddly. As you get to the end, half. that's where this wants to start. You do wanna maintain tension. Up, so Keep an eye on it. It's the so basically down. I'm coming out this bead here, red bead that's gonna want to try to loosen up on you. And I'm gonna sew in this one over here, and then I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth. Oh, and this last one did, so let's just pull. This turquoise bead is not attached to this red bead. So that's a spot where this could pull open. So we need to turn around and go back the other way. So this is my tail. Let me just scoot that out of the way. So now, I'm going to go through that red bead because I have to join the two of those. Into the yellow up bead. And now I'm just gonna go back and forth between the up beads. It's just to reinforce. pull and pull my starting thread. If I want, I can wrap this around my finger like I did at the beginning. All right, so this is the final up bead. But we're not done yet. Tighten that up. and go back the other way. We could sew back this down. will fit nicely over our end cap. Flip my work. To finish off my thread, I'm going to travel back into my piece on a diagonal and make some figure eights and then snip off my thread. So I'm coming out this yellow bead All right, so I'm working diagonally. So now I'm gonna sew up through this blue bead. Working diagonally up through that red bead. I'm always moving just one bead at a time. And now I'm gonna sew down through the red bead that's right next to it. So 
there to will fit nicely over our end cap. All this we have is to one do time when I don't flip is my work off because then I get confused about which way I've already gone. So now I'm going to sew through this blue this bead yellow bead that's to, to the left of my get yellow back bead. Into my piece also up. I'm continuing diagonally up and to the right, first through that red bead, and now up bead. through this yellow bead. Working diagonally up through that red bead. Coming out of, right, so from here, now that I'm in the middle, I want to turn around. Just gonna roll my piece a little bit. So I'm changing directions because I was going up and to the right. Now I'm going down and to the right. So moving diagonally down and to the right. One more beat. way I've already gone and then I just repeat that with my other thread all right so I've moved down there we have it again Hootie Sitch and cap cover